What's going on, my fellow YouTubers? This is Ricky J. Can you tell I'm pretty pumped up, man? Because we are going to set Brock Lesnar up in another freak show matchup, this time against arguably the greatest bantamweight of all time, and that's Dominic Cruz, man. And this is going to be a Dominic Cruz in his prime before all of his surgeries. Holy smokes, he was unstoppable. And speaking of unstoppable, Brock Lesnar has been unstoppable since we've been matching him up in these crazy matchups, man. I'm not going to tell you <laughs> the details of the other fights, but this simulated Brock Lesnar, or this AI Brock Lesnar is a beast, but he's going to be up against it, against Dominic Cruz. It'll be really cool. I love doing these matchups, by the way. Seeing a heavyweight, an elite heavyweight, going up against an elite bantamweight. And let's see what happens. You guys ready for this? I'm going to hit finish. Don't want to save the event. Because we're doing it right now, big boy. And we're going to go to advance because a lot of you guys said that the simulation is a lot more realistic when it's in advanced. So let's do this. We're going to set it to simulation. Here we go. You guys ready, man? I'm not controlling anything. We are setting it AI versus AI. We're going to see who's going to win between Brock and Big Daddy Cruz. Can't wait. Here we go. Here are the intros. Enjoy it, baby. Goldberg, welcome once again to the Ultimate Fighting Championship. We have an outstanding card for you fans tonight, capped off by our main event of the evening, and the title is on the line. My partner Joe Rogan. Joe, what can we expect from the two fighters in tonight's main event of the evening? Well, you know, Mike, both these guys are professionals at the top of their game right now. I expect both of them to come in prepared, in great shape, and ready for a five-round war. This should be a very entertaining matchup, and I can't wait to get it started. No question about that, Joe. The main event is a good one. In fact, this whole card is stacked from top to bottom. To get the night started, let's first take a look at our rules of the octagon. Three judges score the bout, the bout duration three five-minute rounds. Tonight's championship fight is scheduled for five five-minute rounds. A 10-point must scoring system is in effect, with the round winner gaining 10 points, his opponent nine or less, based on effective striking, grappling, aggression, and octagon control. With a dominant run in the WEC 135-pound division, Dominic Cruz is no stranger to performing against world-class opponents. Possessing solid wrestling skills and creative strikes that baffle his opponents, Cruz is an extremely tough problem to deal with. NCAA wrestling champion turned UFC champion, Brock Lesnar, who when he arrived in the octagon, rapidly became one of the most dominant and popular heavyweights in the sport. With a size, speed, and strength advantage over almost every man in the division, he is truly a force to be reckoned with. Oh yeah, here we go. Man, this is going to be crazy, seeing Brock against Cruz. You know, it's kind of a shame about Dominic Cruz, man. Let me just tell you. Let, let's sit back and let me uh, voice my thoughts on Dominic Cruz. You know, he had to sit on the sidelines for three years. October 1st, 2011, he beat Demetrius Johnson. And then he just had a series of injuries and was on the sidelines for three years trying to recoup. And it was crazy because those times he was in the prime of his, like physical career you know what I mean like he was in the prime of his life as far as his um, abilities are concerned but before all that happened he was kicking butt and taking names and this is the crews that we are seeing right here in the simulation matchup we're seeing the crews that was just so hard to hit so hard to solve man his footwork his elusiveness was just second to none he had wins over Uriah Faber and his only loss during this time I'm talking about you know, 2011 and earlier, was to Uriah Faber. He lost by a guillotine choke in WEC 26. But then he avenged the loss and beat Uriah twice. But he had wins over Demetrius Johnson. Um, 
Coley, Brian Bowles, Joseph Benavidez. Um, he was just an unbelievable athlete that found a way to win, you know? Even though sometimes it may not be the most exciting, but he found a way to win. And for me, it was exciting just because of his ability, like I said, not to get hit, man. This guy was so great on the feet with his angles that he would cut, his um, just the way his mind thinks in terms of his offensive stand-up game. You know, knowing when to pop in, knowing when to pop out, hopping in, hopping out, his head movement, he was just so unorthodox. But he also had that wrestling game too that he could always revert to if things got a little bit dicey. So he was just such a fantastic fighter to watch. And yeah, like I said, it's such a shame that he was put on the back burner for such a long time. And then when he did come back, you know, like he did beat TJ Dillashaw, even though I thought TJ won that fight. Let me know if you agree with that. Um, beat Uri Faber again, lost to Cody Garbrandt, lost to Henry Cejudo, and um, he won a split decision against Casey Kenny, and that was a crazy fight. I don't know, man. That was a tough fight. I kind of had Casey Kenny winning. So he's just not the same fighter now, which is a shame at 35 years old. But the good news is with, for him, he has a second career behind the booth. I'll be honest with you, I'm not the biggest fan of him behind the booth. I don't know, let me know if you agree with that. I, sometimes I find that he talks too much and he talks over people. But he's not too bad, man. He's not too bad. But I really felt for him when, you know, he had to go through all that adversity, man. Was it the knee surgeries? And um, to finally bounce back, that just shows the heart of a champion that he really is. But um, <laughs> let's get geared up for this fight. I know you guys enjoy these crazy matchups and... Just so you guys know, like, you can kind of, like, hack the game by making these open weight fights in UFC Undisputed 3. So, this is not the norm. You just can't jump into the game and make these matchups. Here we go. Again, let's see. I, I'm very interested to see what happens. And I say this all the time when I do these videos. UFC Undisputed 3 always, or I shouldn't say always, but pretty much all the time, showcases realistic outcomes when you do these simulation matchups so here we go let's see what happens like that Cruz again using that speed he's got to watch out for that crazy takedown <laughs> there it is is he gonna stuff it oh it doesn't stuff it and that's pretty re pretty realistic <laughs> to start things off is he gonna reverse them and Brock Lesnar in this game his top game is amazing oh look at that the smaller fighter being able to kind of get his oh nice good head movement slither his way out of that you know it's crazy back in the olden days man guys oh big uppercut by brock guys before fights they would um bathe in baby oil they wouldn't shower and then that way when they sweat they would uh, they would take a bath that's what i'm saying they take a bath in baby oil and then that when they would get to their fight the next day you wouldn't be able to grab anything because they were so slippery did you guys know that's crazy we're seeing right here we're seeing Cruz, man hanging in there but he can't be taking those uppercuts by Brock Brock's doing a good job with the stand-up game and Brock actually improved in his stand-up game as he um, started to you know get those wins inside the octagon and start to get those minutes oh and he's wailing away oh Cruz with a nice little job going for the takedown and then he passes Brock kind of overcommitted on those punches and look at that Brock is turtling up and imagine seeing this Brock would just <laughs> throw him off like a backpack. <laughs> like a good old backpack. But look at this. He's going for a submission. And Lesnar's not the greatest. Oh my gosh. Lesnar's not the greatest at getting out of submissions. Remember the Frank Mir fight? <laughs> oh, he gets out of it. He gets out of it. And Cruz loses the position. But that was a good move by him. You got to go for broke here. He's got to get out of the, <laughs> the corner. Oh, nice <laughs> left overhead right there. And the cool thing about Cruz, and the, it's showcased here in this game, he's using different stances, you know? Going from orthodox to southpaw. And there he's got to get moving. He's got to use that head, head movement. He's doing it, man. He's doing a fantastic job. Oh, and Brock going with the clinch. Is he going to suplex him? I'll always remember. Oh, I just want to see what happens here. But, I, yeah. <laughs> oh, he's getting a plum. But I'll always remember back in the olden days, in the UFC days, um, when Dan the Beast Severn faced, uh, what was his name? Anthony Mad Dog Macias. And I think that was the first time ever we saw a suplex in the octagon. And what happened was... Um, 
Dan Severn got Mad Dog Macias. Uh, he kind of got his back standing. And he ended up suplexing him. And then it was crazy. He still had his back when he was on the mat. And I believe he picked him up and suplexed him again. And Macias was so out of it that he was shaking his head trying to get rid of the cobwebs uh, or get rid of the stars when he got suplex and Dan Severn ended up finishing him but it was so crazy actually seeing what you would actually see in the WWE <laughs> multiple suplexes in a real fight it was so cool well, that was a good little round right there I could say you know Brock Lesnar won that first round but Cruz was kind of hanging in there holy smokes look at Brock Getting this sweat on. And I've said this before, man. Back in, uh, what, 2001, I went to, uh, when WrestleMania was in Toronto, I think it was 2001, I went to a uh, fan access and I saw Brock Lesnar wrestle live. He wasn't really big back then. And I'm like, this guy looks like a superhero, man. Seeing him in person, that big tattoo was crazy. Oh, oh, man. Oh, and again, I, I said this before, man. The heavyweights against the smaller fighter, they always seem to have more zip on those punches, and that's realistic. Brock looking loose here. Brock looking confident. Oh, he's going for a kick. You didn't see many kicks from Lesnar when he was inside the octagon, but he did kick a couple of times, man. A couple of leg kicks. But Cruz is doing a nice job. Oh, popping in and then popping out. Oh, he's got to be careful. Oh, no. Oh, big bombs by Lesnar. Is it going to be over? And the referee, oh my gosh. The referee, Mahal, is that his name? <laughs> he steps in early. And I've noticed in this game when guys are hurt, they don't let you take unnecessary damage. And that's pre pretty realistic. But Brock Lesnar, spoiler alert, continues his undefeated streak. He's just taking out anybody. Who should he fight next? He's just taking out everybody in this game. It's pretty crazy. Holy cow. But remember... Cruz is a bantamweight, but Cruz is an overall 92 in this game, which is quite high. I don't know what the highest rating is in this game. If you're a hardcore UFC Undisputed 3 player, let me know. But I think he's up there as, you know, one of the highest rated fighters in this game. But Brock, I think Brock's an 86 or an 88. Brock takes it and gets the W. But that was a good, uh, <laughs> a good fight by Cruz, but just a little too small, and not a lot of zip on those punches. And you know another thing I just want to say, holy cow, I'm running off on tangents this whole video, but I just want to say I miss the old days when you're able to advertise anything you want on your shorts and your shirts. Um, look at this, it just looks so much better, man. Do you guys remember that? Guys would have all sorts of advertising, but then Joe Rogan would get upset when people would try to advertise their after party or whatever, their sponsor, after a win. He would take the microphone away, but those were the golden days. Let me know if you uh, if you agree with that. I miss seeing all the tap-out gear and, uh, what, Toyo tires? Remember, that was a big one too, Burger King. <laughs> Oh, man, crazy times back in the day. But anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed this fun little freak show matchup between Brock and Dominic Cruz. Who should Brock face next? Man, he's kicking butt and taking names. Should he continue facing the lower tier fighters and then work his way up? Let me know in the comments. Can't wait to hear what you guys have to offer. And maybe the highest thumbs up um, fight uh, that you want to see will be the next fight that Brock will take. Uh, who knows, man? Let me let me know in the comments who you want to see and your thoughts on this video. All right, guys, this is Ricky J. All the best, man. I'm out of here. Take care.